My name's Adrian and I'm known as AD to a lot of my friends. Uh, we live here on uh, this block of land with um, uh, our family, my wife Shelley and uh, our seven kids. Needs, um, sink and a stove. No, we've, our six kids. We've, no, seven. Our six. Um, we'll go with seven. No, six or seven. Six. six or seven kids and um, we've been here for about three years. Um, it's a uh, it's five acres of good fertile Kapi Coast loam. We are we're still real novices in, in growing, so uh, we're really only a few seasons into um, a um, into this adventure. Especially when you're growing children, it's a nice it's nice to know that you're you know you're doing you're doing the best that you can for them, and I think taking responsibility for your food, what you feed them, is a good is a good thing. Yeah. So and this is our this is our kind of our kitchen garden, and um, obviously not a lot here this time of year. Um, we had a lot of success with the cucumbers this year and um, carrots have done really well. We, we seem to do this seem to do good carrots here. So, um, yeah and like all the other regular things you'd expect. And the pinto beans are the green turning yellow low low lying bean and some pumpkin in there still. Um, yes and then we've got some beds we're preparing for um, leeks and um, silver beets and spinach. How are you preparing those? Are you using any machinery? Yeah well um, uh, my neighbour um, was, there was a tractor I suddenly appeared in the street the other day and while it was in the street I just ran up to the driver and said oh do you mind, <laughs> do you mind coming through my block um, and give me a couple of rows so he he was whizzed through and half an hour later um, and he, he wouldn't take a payment so a lovely elderly Chinese man um, was just so so lovely it was kind of a week with uh, hand tools um, in half an hour and uh, so that was an um, unexpected blessing and your corn is huge we've found a way of preserving sweet corn through blanching where you boil and blanch them and then um, and then boil them in the jars as well so um, hopefully that'll give us um, some lovely sweet corn over winter. Down at the river there's a, an old orchard with very mature trees, apples and pears and plums and nuts um, and then we put a lot of citrus and apples, cherry guavas here and there's cranberries and big nashis and pears and peach and nectarine and, and there's all, all sorts of things. So this is your milking cow. Milking cow. Who milks her? Um, Jack, uh, actually all the boys do, Finn, Shay, myself, um, it's normally me and one of the kids, but then if I need to be somewhere else then the kids can do it themselves. The raw milk, is, we were buying raw milk, um, but we had shares in a cow, which is a way of getting around some of the regulations, and some would be milking the cow and then distributing raw milk around a little informal network. We actually give our surplus to a, a local guy, elderly chap who believes in raw milk, so he comes around and brings us exotic fruit and weird books and funny things that he thinks we might like, and we usually do. And he exchanged those and he gets his, his litre of milk or two. So that's a nice little exchange. How many litres is that roughly? Usually it's about six, seven. Thanks. Thanks. It's really nice milk. Wow. Wow. Very creamy, we make it on butter and stuff. Yeah, so we do butter and sometimes we make cheese, but not often. How do you go, Jack? Yeah, average. We haven't got a fridge. Um, we just use a food safe and keep food kind of, you know, with learning about, um, you know, preserving meat and and, and smoking and experimenting with all these sorts of different things. So trying to uh, do alternative ways of 
preserving food. Well, we've got a, um, a wood range. That's great because it's using um, you know, a renewable resource. We've got a lot of trees on the block, which are really good firewood trees. And then we can, and we are planting replacement trees. So, so that kind of cycle is working well. It sounds like you don't use much electricity anyway. Well, no, the power bills are pretty low. Um, so it's just lights that we're running in the washing machine, which is also low, low draw. And connected to that is um, a large wet bag, and so all our heating and hot water is all kind of cared for. But the washing machine's generally quite energy efficient. Um, if we do decide to keep it, particularly with the nappies, um, it will run off a 12 volt system if we get an inverter to convert a 12 volt up to a 230, 240. Do you know how to do this? Have you been getting some help from someone with the solar panels? Uh, I've got a book, yeah, just got a book, and um, uh, that, that's been really helpful. I think we're looking at a, a two solar panel system and a battery cell that can generate um, maybe a 24 volt power supply to a handful of lights around the place. And then we'll switch off um, then we'll unplug from the mains completely. Do you have television or DVDs? Or? Uh, no, we've got a gramophone, um, but we just can't seem to get our emails uh, out of it. Um, I'm sure people send us emails, but um, no, we don't have any any technology and, and screens. We've chosen not to do screens. So phones and games and, you know, computers and things like that. <laughs> I don't exist. <laughs> huh. Eldest is Jack, and then um, How is Jack? 13, and then Finn is 11, and Che... Uh, che! Che, Che um, is 9, and then Mana here is... How old are you, Mana? 6. 6. And Ari's four. three. How old are you? Four. 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 Um, <laughs> and Samuel's two. And Davy is zero. Zero. He is six weeks. Our four school-aged kids have all been given a uh, Ministry of Education exemption, and um, that means we've satisfied the ministry that we can provide uh, at least. Um, as good an education at home as, as being offered at school. A walled off curriculum is kind of a framework. We kind of draw on a whole lot of walled off resources to supplement and to to make that make that framework real. We start the day with, um, with prayers at about seven and that involves um, a little liturgy. Um, we've got a, a lovely are just different resources that we use and, and we recite different prayers and um, uh, pray for needs as, as we are aware of them and read different, the lives of different um, activists and, and saints and prophets um, and, and read the Gospels. So, I mean, that's a good kind of 30, 40 minutes in the start of the day and then um, after breakfast, music lessons, which is obviously learning, um, so that takes up time, and then lots of uh, chores, which is all part of learning, and um, and then, um, yeah, when all of that is kind of done and dusted, oh, it's yeah, into uh, into the barn, into the, yeah, kind of the more day. formal classroom setting, and, um, and that, uh, in a kind of a walled off way, we start with a morning circle, so there's reciting of verse and reciting of prayers and reciting of rhymes and ditties and, and all sorts of other little kind of oral things and then you know writing and, and maths and other, other stuff. And then later in the day um, there's all sorts of practical work around the farm and um, yeah I mean it's what's what's um, schooling and, and what's just life. It's, it's, all, it's all kind of blurs together. We've still got um, a lot of trees around the property. In fact, for maths one day, the kids estimated uh, we had um, half a million, they actually got it right down to the exact number, estimated 
565,213 pieces of firewood um, calculating the height of all the trees and ringing them and getting you know eight pieces out of a out of a out of a, a ring and then the, the limbs and chopping them up and so that was the fun that was maths for a day. What did you do today Zach? Well we kind of just Dad just gave us a um, just to talk about how they used to do these in the old days, do their maths and stuff. And we started just building these. What do they call that? Abacus? An abacus. Abacus, that's it. An abacus. So what's yeah. that? What column is that? That's the ones. The we, ones. We, we, the so ones, ones. Tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds. So if you lay it like that, it should work. You can yeah. go put them all up the top. Slide them down. Okay, show me show me um, four thousand two hundred and sixty-one. What? Sixty. Yeah. Very good. One of my kids came the other day and said, um, Dad, I love my life. And I thought, well, that was that's quite a nice, you know. It's like I didn't have to, I didn't solicit those comments. He just offered them freely, and I thought, well, we can't be doing too, you know, a whole lot wrong if, um, if that's kind of his, uh, you know, his, his own comments. Yeah, so that's nice. <laughs> so here's our little one. Um, Tree house, which um, sort of started as a little summer summer project. Um, so I, I mean, this owes us a fraction over three hundred dollars, um, and that was mainly for the the tantalised poles and the um, the bearer that um, was holding up the floor, or uh, basically the whole thing. You know, all the materials were given to us. Um, the corrugated iron was only three dollars a sheet. All the windows and doors were, were free. Yeah, quite a quite cost effective. Um, each of the kids can point to all the bits they did and and designing and planning and building. And lots of the heavy work, like like getting those windows up there, was quite a quite a mission. So we did a lot of it as a two two three four person job. Yeah, I mean the whole thing is a team effort. Yeah, good. So usually when we sleep in here, this big here, if it's about four, we have someone under the bed. What? And yeah, she usually goes right under the bed. And then we have matched the sleep on the floor. Over. But it was pretty cramped when we had eight people here. We make our own coffee to drink up here. We, it's like this dandelion coffee out of the dandelion roots. And it's this root and you just dry it and grind it up and it tastes really good. So we just drink that. Should have a stock up here somewhere. Right, we brought it back to the house, yeah. Is it from dandelions? Yeah, the roots. It's quite nice. Jack reckons it's going to be his room? Yeah, well I think um, definitely his classroom. I think he'll move down here with his school books and, and work um, within a bit of peace. So that'll be a good place to, to study and um, yeah, I mean, I think um, next summer he'll be old enough maybe to spend the summer down here and... You go. Your you turn go. now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Yeah. Go on. Jump, jump your legs around. Go. Oh, she's got it. Hold tight. You're there. Yeah, go. Legs round. You done it. You done it. I am shot. Well done. All by yourself. I am going to see the car. <laughs> that was clever. Twenty five. Woo. I'm doing that. Come on. Come on. Go ahead, bro. Here's 
a um, little windmill I was telling you about. Just needs finishing, just needs plumbing down to the, um, the header tank there. And then that just sort of draws up water from about seven or eight metres below ground. And there's lovely water underneath here is trillions of litres of premium water. So uh, if we ever need to drink it, um, we can. So come and have a look at the um, composting toilet. Ooh. I hear it's the best composting toilet in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, I've heard that too. I mean, it's, I mean, we're waiting for the results of the formal judging, but um, I think it's um, certainly in the running. So we, we, I've put on this little deck here um, using these lamp posts and um, some old Oregon planks. And uh, down the end here, I've put in four lamp posts. A lot of this is um, pallets, so just second hand, um, well not second hand, free uh, pallets. Bits of scrap, and this is some tantalised pine from something else. And so it's sort of bits and pieces. Basically it's a two chamber system where we'll fill up one, one half and then shut that off and let it break down and then uh, work on the other side and then after about six months empty the, the first cubicle and um, put that on the garden and um, let the other one rest and then go back to the first one. And we've got a little guttering system where um, the number ones are kind of caught and um, funneled away and caught out the back into a big, big jar and then we can get rid of those somewhere else. And separating the ones from the twos is the key. Um, the um, the worms don't like the wheeze and um, makes it wet and cold and smelly. Here yeah, we we use um, foam books for toilet paper, and um, that's a great source of carbon and, and nice mix. And I've been making um, wakashi as a little way of stimulating the compost and activating that, those microorganisms. You're lucky to have all these shelter belts, so. Eh? Yeah, well the pine is, it takes away a lot of our light, it takes away a lot of the moisture out of the ground, it puts pine needles everywhere. It doesn't provide a lot of shelter at all, because when wind comes through pine, um, it just funnels through the big gaps. Um, you want something that's much more um, like a sieve that's um, lower to the ground and that allows the allows the wind to blow through it and filters it. I've just been building a new woodshed down here just next to where the cow is so um, once the roof's on that'll be uh, where all that wood will go and this will be a, a milking shed too when 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 it's uh, winter and windy uh, there'll be a wall of wood on the western side and, and Ruby can just kind of uh, tuck herself in uh, behind that wood and under the under the roof and be snug as a bug in a rug. And this is my pine cone later actually, I must mention this, um, this is a patented design. What you do is um, you put wet and green pine cones on the top and then out the bottom, miraculously, using a system called gravity, the dry open pine cones roll out. So that was just a little something. That, so needs um needs kind of restocking. But that was full um, five months ago, and we just sort of worked our way down. And the idea is to keep keep it topping it up. But yeah, I think one of the, one of the ideas that was precious to us is the idea of freedom. Um, so we um, the idea of um, kind of being no man's slave and no man's master is quite a quite a central idea where we don't want to we don't want to be anyone's boss and we don't want to have to run an answer to uh, to some some other boss who's telling us what to do so that sense of um, self-determination that um, we we get to uh, if our um, if our table is laden with good food it's, be it's, it's because we've worked hard and grown it and um, we get the pleasure of enjoying it sharing it so um, yeah, and just just the freedom to uh, enjoy our kids and enjoy um, the nature that um, uh, is all around us. There is one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Big aspect of um, the Catholic worker 
is um, the notion of personalism. Personalism is kind of the idea that um, each individual needs to take responsibility firstly for themselves. People that, um, it's not the job of the state yeah. or um, I don't know, the church or anybody else. It, Personalism requires us to um, stand on our own feet and to um, to work uh, honestly. Um, and personalism also uh, calls us to care for our, our neighbours and the people in in our close vicinity.